Morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Hope you're having a great day and have a peaceful weekend going on. Unemployment numbers in the U.S. look great. Uh, the up, uh, excuse me, the number of people who got work was up 243,000 for the last period, and the unemployment rate itself dropped to 8.3, despite the fact that the changes in calculations now include more younger and more older workers. As we keep telling people, the U.S. economy is going to be okay, might even be terrific in a couple of years. But the fact of the matter is that the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and as long as the U.S. Federal Reserve continues to print money, which it will for at least three years, and will bail out people overseas as well, um, part of what's been going on is that certain times foreign banks have been given access to the discount window. And so as a consequence, they've been able to be saved until the euro people can get themselves in order. So just keep in mind that even though things are going well in the United States, they're going to hell in a handbasket and other parts of the world invest accordingly. Now, so we're seeing gold trading uh, right around its 1740, 1750 level. Uh, we, we encourage you to accumulate more gold last week, 5 to 10%. We're telling you to add 10 to 15% this week. Uh, we see gold this year, as you know, being at 2450. We think the train is about to leave the station, so accumulate, if you will. Now, uh, one of the key factors that we're going to talk about going forward is gold demand being, excuse me, gold supply being negatively impacted by political change in sub-Saharan Africa and certain other parts of the world. We're going to be talking a lot about the African National Congress. Now, the African National Congress, formerly led by Nelson Mandela, that was a long time ago, um, ha had its origins um, because of uh, the, the horrible uh, program of apartheid that was uh, in South Africa had its origins among severe socialists and communists. And we don't believe those people remain in control of the ANC. But we do believe it's useful to think about communist views of the world as, composed, as opposed to democratic views of the world when we, we, we anticipate ANC action. Now, at their Congress, as it were, today, um, the African National Congress is studying a 50% tax on minerals, 50%. Now, South Africa is the most resource-rich re country in the world. But if they're going to do things like impose a 50% tax because they don't believe that mining profits are being justly distributed, you have to remember that the pressure on the ANC government is that uh, right now uh, unemployment is at 50% for youth. They define that as people under 25. The only way they're going to get out of that is to grow their economy at a 7% rate going forward to 2020. Now, what's significant about all this is their growth rates are nowhere near that. Uh, some people had forecast a 3.6 3 growth rate for last year. It turned out to be 2.5. Um, most of sub-Saharan Africa is doing much better at a plus 5.5%. So the ANC is in the situation where a whole lot of rich white guys have been replaced by a whole lot of rich white guys and really, really rich black guys, including Zuma's kid. Zuma, of course, is the uh, president of the ANC uh, and at one time ran their spy agency and enforcement division. Um, <clears throat> so... Most people in South Africa have not seen any material change in their circumstance. While the political attitude is now people can vote and be free, which is great, there has been no material improvement. Now, we noticed this on our trip to South Africa a couple of years ago, you know, that we went from the lavish beauty of Cape Town Harbor and you went literally two and a half miles away, you're in a shanty town. Uh, and uh, we went on safari down there, great place, wonderful blah, blah, look around, we went Plettenberg by, you look around, and all of a sudden, you know, 10 feet away from the surf shop are people living in uh, dire poverty. When we got back uh, from uh, South Africa, we saw on the um, PBS a special about Plettenberg, and, you know, we had stayed on the ocean, 
and you know, literally a few miles inland, a shanty town, the usual kind of stuff in South Africa. We saw people standing beside the roads trying to get rides on the beautiful superhighways. So ANC's got a serious problem. But from an investment standpoint, putting a 50% tax not only harms uh, the existing mining companies, but it has a totally chilling effect on new investment and on what they call speculation. You can't have mines without people being willing to take a shot. They're not going to be willing to pay, take a shot if 50% of their profits are going to have to go to the government. We see this situation in South Africa getting worse and worse, and we think this is going to redound to the benefit of Nigeria. Uh, which has shown a more rational. Now, Nigeria has its own political problems, but it is not killing the goose that's laying the golden egg. So uh, we think this uh, problems in South Africa, as they grow worse, are going to redound to the benefit, particularly of Nigeria. So uh, this is Arnie Waters. Buy some more gold. Don't go all in just yet. Uh, we see gold trading up over the next week or 10 days. We think people are so Eurocentric, they're not focused on the problems in other parts of the world that have direct bearing on gold, platinum, diamonds, and other important markets like that. So enjoy the ride if you're an American. Be very scared if you're a European. Hope that your government finds a way to provide political freedom as well as economic results in China. This is Arnie Waters. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Have a great day.